Hey, it's Bill Gross, the LA probate expert. I'm the official podcast of the LA Investors.com, LA Real Estate Investors.com podcast, and the uh, Vendors Expo we do every week. And a week from Thursday, on Thursday night, September 8th, and I believe also the prior night, Wednesday, September 7th in Ventura, we have a special guest, Kathy Fetke, who's going to talk about how to increase income and make more wealth. I'll let her get in the details. But I chance to sit with her and I want to share with her share her with you. So, hey, Kathy, say hi. Hi. <laughs> and where do we catch you today? Where are you at? I am at home in, in Malibu. In Malibu. It doesn't get much nicer than that. So, it's pretty nice. Um, <laughs> you know, give us a little background. I know you have a whole program and coaching and things like that that you do, but let's start from the beginning. Where did you grow up and then how did you get into real estate investing in the first place? Yeah, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I, I think I had tea at the same restaurant that uh, many of the founders of today's big uh, internet companies came from. So I was right in the middle of the Silicon Valley's birth. And um, I went to San Francisco State, uh, lived in Europe for a couple of years as an exchange student. And um, then, you know, boy, it's, I, I wrote all of this in my book called Retire Rich with Rentals. Uh, but basically, I had never been taught uh, that there was anything besides just working um, putting aside 10%, hoping that by the time you're 65 or 70, you've got enough saved up and that, you know, that, that, that you timed the stock market well so that you could actually retire. Um, you know, I didn't know there was any other way of doing things. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's sort of my, I, I had a degree in uh, broadcasting at San Francisco State and worked in newsrooms, which again was considered really high pay. But I, I, you know, today when I'm in newsrooms, kind of as the expert, not so much as the, as the host, I have a lot of the newscasters asking me what I do and how to create passive income. So your book, uh, Retire Rich with Rentals, it's on Amazon, and there's a link there, here to it if you're interested. Tell me about how did you start in getting rich? What was the impetus? One day you're not rich, next day you are rich. What was the impetus of getting you to get on that path? And what was it that triggered you? specifically to get into rentals? Well, it def definitely didn't happen in a day, not one day <laughs> that I suddenly became rich. Uh, it's a it's a process, right? But, um, you know, we were actually doing, I, I married a guy named Rich, so I thought maybe that was the ticket. That was what I was raised to believe. Uh, you, know. you know, I'm just, I'm kidding, but not really. I mean, back when I was young, um, you know, it really was your job to, to uh, you know, get a to, to find a rich husband. I, I found a guy named Rich and I, I thought that would, that would do it. Well, you know, anyway, um, he, so he had written a book called Extreme Success. We were just talking about Tony Robbins earlier. Rich was kind of being billed as the new Tony Robbins. He's a really incredible motivational speaker, had a book called Extreme Success, was touring the, the country, uh, talking about how to create extreme success. And on that tour, he noticed a freckle uh, he went to check it out when he got back and it turned out it was melanoma. The doctor <sighs> said that he probably had six months to live because this was 20 years ago and they really didn't have a cure for it. Wow. Um, well, fortunately, yep, there it is. Extreme success. He just came out with his new book, the wise investor 20 years later. That's just, uh, coming out next month. Yeah. Wow. Um, but he's, he's healthy today. That's the good news. Thank God. Um, but it was a very scary time. And we were, we went from being at the, what felt like the top of our game. You know, we just bought a big house. Um, he had this best selling book. We had two beautiful, healthy children. I was living, you know, the dream. And we were doing everything we were told to do from our financial planner. Rich would meet with our financial planner once a month and we will put 10% of our earnings in a, you know, retirement fund, 10% for emergencies, 10% for fund. We had all these different folders, basically buckets for money. We were doing everything right. But then when this news hit, uh, it obviously was like, Hey, if Rich has got six months to live, he needs to live, you know, and uh, we didn't want him working those months. So um, and of course, medical bills add up. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that that 10% savings for emergencies was not enough. And we weren't adequately uh, covered um, insurance wise. So it's a, it, was, it was like being at the top of our game to just plummeting literally overnight. And 
It was a scary time. But at that time, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had left my my um, job in broadcasting and was raising our two young kids. I wanted to stay with them. I didn't want to go leave them for 10 hours a day to get a get a job somewhere. So I just thought, you know, I've heard of this thing called passive income. I don't know anyone who has it or has done it. I, I, it's not in my world. I, I knew a lot of people who made money, just like we made money, but we didn't know how to invest it. And we certainly didn't know how to live off, you know, any income from it. So this became my obsession to just find out, is this something that anyone can achieve and attain? Is this ability to live the life you want and have money coming in passively? I just thought that would be a dream. So I had a, I still had a weekend radio show that I, uh, from my broadcast days, it was in San Francisco and I was kind of just doing a coaching thing, um, coaching people to improve their business and, um, grow their business. And it was kind of along the lines of Rich's book, extreme success, but I thought, okay, I'm going to take this show and I'm going to completely focus on this idea of passive income and interview everybody I could who mm. was experiencing it. And, and that was my degree, basically, <laughs> interviewing all these people. Wow. So um, obviously you're going to go into detail. Uh, you're the guest speaker at the LA Real Estate Investors.com event. Uh, I said a week from Thursday, September 9th uh, in Culver City, the part night on the 8th in Ventura. Um, you're going to go into detail, but give, me, give us maybe an overview. What, what are some of the highlights that you learned of people who are able to successfully generate passive income or residual income that they can live their lives on? What are some of the common denominators of those people who've done that? Honestly, it's wanting it and understanding it, learning about it. Anyone can do it, but most people don't have the mindset. They don't even know it's a real thing. I didn't. I didn't. So um, just learning it and understanding. And when you do, then you see all the ways you can create passive income. There's so many ways. Right. What I learned from the people on my show was there were two main ways to create it. One was through operating a business, kind of creating a, a self-managed business that runs itself. Uh, that's that's one way to create passive income. And another, which generally people would do both, was real estate because that's an asset. Not It's not always passive, but it certainly can be. So if they if people made a lot of money in their business, they would invest it for the long-term and passive income in real estate. So it was usually both of those things. Uh, so that that just, wow, that just opened my eyes. Um, I wanted to do both a business and real estate. I was really fortunate that because I was on a San Francisco radio station, I could really interview almost anybody because the exposure was so big. So one of the people I got to interview was Robert Kiyosaki, who's kind of the king of cash flow. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> I'm reading his newest book right now, as a matter of fact, Capitalist Manifesto. He's amazing. He, he is. And I was lucky enough that he would give me his time um, and come on the show and be interviewed because it was a big station. And that's where, I mean, there were so many people who changed my mind and, and expanded my mindset. But it was really some of the things that Kiyosaki taught me just in that 45 minutes of the interview. And one was that you have to go where the cash flow is. And since our, you know, we're in San Francisco, I, I mean, I didn't even know what, like in San Francisco, there isn't cash flow, right? So, so it's not really a word. The only word that people use in San Francisco when it comes to real estate is negative cash flow, because that's what it is. And that was a pretty common term. It's kind of like, how much do you feed your property? It just simply didn't, didn't cash flow. And what he was explaining is that this was right around 2005, 2006, when values had gone up so much, kind of like today. Uh, and it was very obvious that these loans were bad loans at the time and they were not going to end well. Um, I knew that firsthand because by then I had become a mortgage broker, kind of another story, but I brought on a co-host who was a mortgage broker and, and we got so much business from it. He's like, you got to you got to just become a mortgage broker and take these calls because we would interview his clients and all the cool things they were doing and all the ways they were making money. So anyway, I became a mortgage broker, got to see firsthand that it was a just crazy mess. People just giving away loans to anybody um, that would not end well, obviously. And Kiyosaki was one of the few that could see it. It was so obvious. So he explained 
in the markets where these bad loans were being given out, which was certainly the, the sand states, they call it California, Arizona, Florida, the places that people kind of want to retire and want to be, that, uh, that prices had doubled in just a few years. And that kind of sounds like today, doesn't it? Not a sustainable thing. It can't keep going up. Um, so he just explained it's it's what goes up comes down. You know, these loans are going to come due. People aren't going to be able to pay them. Uh, they're going to find themselves underwater. He could see it so clearly when business suits in New York City sitting around boardrooms certainly couldn't see it. it it's amazing. So what he was doing is selling all of his high priced property, cashing it in and buying in Texas. So I asked him a million questions. Why Texas? No one was talking about Texas at the time. In fact, if we talked about Texas, people would just laugh at us. We got a lot of negative reviews from that show because they're like, Texas, nothing ever happens in Texas. You'll never see prices go up there. Nothing but land, high taxes, all these things, property taxes, no, no state income tax. But, but I, I thought, hey, if it's good enough for Robert Kiyosaki, it's good enough for me. I don't care right. what the commentators are saying. So I jumped on a plane. Uh, went to meet with a real estate agent. The first thing that that she did is take me to a four hundred thousand dollar market. It's like, oh, this will be great for you. I'm like, <laughs> come on, four hundred thousand dollars for a home in two thousand five in Texas was like a mansion. So I thought, okay, I I can't trust real estate agents. Uh, they just want the commission. I'm not saying all of them, but definitely the ones I met. So I thought, who can I trust in this sort of foreign, out of state market? That Robert Kiyosaki said was good, but he didn't give me any more information than that. So I thought property managers, you know, they have to manage the thing. They're probably going to tell me what's renting and where, you know, where the demand is and where the best cash flow is. So I ended up meeting with probably 10 property managers on that trip instead of real estate agents. And I got a ton of information. Wow. That's how I started. Wow. So, um, on uh, the event that you're um, speaking Thursday, in particular, you're going to continue this theme of out-of-state investing. And so for those of us in Los Angeles, like when you were in San Francisco previously, that becomes a very important topic because we want, we have, you know, I make good money, but I, I can't afford to invest in properties that are negative cash flowing. And California and LA in particular have some other issues that make it uncomfortable as an investor to participate in and so as state does so um is that what you that's what you talk about is buying out of state properties um kind of give me some highlights i see some highlights here on this uh, flyer um yeah. buy the whole strategy i think we understand how can can an average person who's not a full-time investor invest out of state is that a possibility if i have a job nine to five i want to invest in real estate i don't want to invest here but i want to invest in texas or other places is there a reasonable methodology for me to get there where I'm investing as a part-time passive investor? Absolutely. I mean, uh, we later created a company called Real Wealth because once I came back with five properties and then went back and bought five more and talked about it on the show, then everybody wanted to do it. So I just shared my information. Who's my property manager? Who's my agent? You know, who, who's my repair teams? All this. I just shared it and I shared it freely. And I thought, well, gosh, I, I probably need to make it a real legitimate business. So I had my real estate license then, and we just made a, a broker to broker arrangement with, you know, with the real estate agents out there. That's how we make money. Um, but uh, so to answer your question, like there's three things that I learned from Kiyosaki in that interview. And I, I still follow today, um, almost 17 years later, uh, I, at any time that I haven't followed this advice, it hasn't gone well for me. So I've ventured out and tried different things. But when I come back to these three things, it really just works. It works in any economy. It works when when the market crashes. And again, this was 2005 when I bought a bunch of properties. The market crashed three years later. Right. Our properties were fine. They stayed rented. Um, in fact, rents went up. Not in California. Right. We saved right. two properties in California. That was a mistake. Those went down a million dollars each. I lost $2 million in a matter of months. Ouch. But in Texas, they went, the rents went up. They stayed rented. Uh, they stayed rented through COVID. I, I, I've i seen the ups and the downs. And, and this buy and hold strategy works if you do it right. So in answer to your question, can you invest out of state? Of course. 
Um, all the people we help are busy. They're busy football players. They're actors. They're tech people. They don't have time to fix properties or do fix and flips or any of that fancy wholesaling or subject to, you know, all that sounds great, but they don't have time. They already have jobs. They don't need another job. So the buy and hold is really for busy people, in my opinion. But I, I want to explain that it can be extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And I've seen it over and over again of people losing money. I did it. I lost money on, on some of the deals that I, I didn't know how to vet. I didn't know how to understand. So now, again, the three things are uh, making sure that you're in markets that are that have job growth. And I mean diversified job growth. Lots of different kinds of companies, businesses, industries. That's number one. Number two is population growth because that usually comes along with job growth. And then finally, um, affordability. So in an area where there's all this growth, but the values are still affordable, the rents are still affordable, that's a recipe that will make you wealthy because you've got plenty of people, working people who can afford what you have, but they can't build enough to keep up with with growth generally in any market that has a lot of job growth, generally they can't build enough housing to keep up with it. And that means that over time, the values go up. So you get cash flow and appreciation. And that's, that's my favorite. <laughs> you lit up and you said cash flow and appreciation. <laughs> you two best friends. It sounds like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, look, I know you're going to cover all this in detail um, uh, upcoming. So I don't want to go through all of it, but my goal was to kind of hit some of the highlights. I really appreciate you sharing with us. Next week, Thursday, September 8th in Los Angeles, Culver City area. Uh, 6.30 is when she speaks. Before that is the Vendors Expo. And it's free. And come and see Kathy and hear her and see her program more detail. And she invite you to participate more if you're, if you're so inclined. And the night before that, Wednesday night, September 7th in Ventura, same basic program. So, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for spending time with us. I really appreciate that. Look forward to seeing you a week from Thursday. Wonderful. See you then. Thanks for Thanks having so me on. Bye-bye.